What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2022 Honda Civic Si. So about this all new generation of the Si. Well, uh, as you can see, it's wildly different as far as the styling goes compared to the last generation of the Civic Si. It's a little more toned down this time, uh, but I still think it looks pretty good just because you started with a really attractive brand new Civic here that was just launched, you know, back in 2021. And so now, you know, you just have a few little subtle changes here for the Si to to give you a clue that this is the sportier version. So it's always pretty conservative with the SIs as far as the styling, but in this one here, I mean, it really is pretty conservative. You don't even have a unique grill. The grill up front there is just taken from the hatchback version of the Civic, and that's as sporty as it gets up front there. Otherwise, you, know, you just have the SI badges, but I mean, the front bumper, everything is identical to a regular Civic, and uh, this blazing orange pearl color is unique, so that is one way to stand out a little bit more here uh, for the SIs. But, uh, I kind of wish they did a little bit more up front to make it a little more exciting. Obviously there's aftermarket stuff you can do and even Honda has a bunch of accessories you can add on to make it look sportier if you want. But I just wish from the factory they did a little bit more, but I still think it looks really nice. You have those sharp new standard LED headlamps up front, but I still really like the new front end here on the Civics. I think it's gonna age very well and it's a very kind of classic look in my opinion. Also coming down to the sides here, you have these unique black 18 inch wheels that look pretty nice. And uh, otherwise the side profile here is basically identical. You do have black mirror caps and black window trim, but other than that, it's all the same here on the sides. And going out to the back, again, very subtle changes. You do have a nice and pretty uh, large spoiler there on the trunk lid, but uh, other than that, again, it's very mild with just an SI badge there. And then you have little exhaust finishers there on the dual exhaust. And so it's a little bit of a unique rear bumper there just uh, for that alone. But other than that, still, you know, very conservative styling here. But even though the SI is still pretty conservative looking, I don't think that's a bad thing whatsoever. I personally really like this. I think it's a more mature look for those who don't want something super shouty and in your face. And uh, so I actually really love the new styling here on the Civic SIs. The interior of the new Civic SI though is nicely jazzed up over a regular Civic. And so uh, the main standout feature you'll see here are these unique seats here for the SI. So they have this cool like checkered red uh, pattern here on the fabric. And and uh, they're nice, soft, comfortable seats, but also have really great bolstering to them. I love the integrated headrests. The only downside of these seats is that you now have no heated seats here in the Civic Si. You used to get that as standard in the Si. No more heated seats here, unfortunately. But, you know, they're cloth, so they don't get too cold or too hot. So I think, you know, just having them not have the heat isn't a huge deal um, and still just really great seats. Uh, otherwise, though, the other unique things here you'll see are you have metal pedals here. You also have red stitching on the steering wheel, um, which is a nice little touch. And the steering wheel is just fantastic anyway. So it's OK that it's not really unique to the SI otherwise. But, you know, on the door panels here, you have more of that checkered trim. But one thing I wish that they did switch over was you have have this like rough cloth here on your, all your elbow points and that gets really dirty and gross looking very quickly. I wish they would have gone to some type of, you know, soft touch vinyl or something instead for those elbow points. But other than that, you know, I really like, you know, all the red stitching. You have the red trim around the air vents, which is all cool. You also do have some unique touches here for the gauges. So you'll see those little red brackets are unique here for the uh, gauge cluster. Otherwise, it's the same partially digital gauge cluster you get in other Civics. Um, but the cool thing here with the SI is that in addition to all the normal stuff that you can show on that digital portion, it also will show you a boost gauge. It'll show you um, your throttle position. It'll show you your brake position, a G meter. Um, it has a stop watch as well as again all the other normal stuff but you know just kind of fun and cool that you have some of those little touches which are things that some other sporty vehicles um, don't always give you and so nice that you have all that customization there in those gauges uh, another thing is you do get the uh, nine inch touchscreen with the wireless apple carplay wireless android auto as standard which kind of gives us an edge over some of the other competitors which don't have the wireless connectivity and smaller screens sometimes you also do have the bose center point stereo here which is fantastic and so that's just one more cherry on top of the really great interior here in the new Civic SIs. All right, so let's start up and go for a drive. All the new Civics here have the new Honda key, which I love. It is a really small key. Probably, honestly, this is the smallest key in the automotive industry currently. And it still is a really nice feeling key, but I just love that they did a small key. You don't need to have some massive fob, especially if you, you know, keep your key in your pocket like I do. I love having this little key in my pocket. It's so much nicer than all the other keys out there. So anyway, it is keyless access, keyless entry, and push button start here as standard in the Civic SIs as well. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the end and start button, which as you can see kind of glows there. 
And it starts right up. And if you're curious to hear about all the other details of the 2022 Civic interior in general, as far as how the infotainment works, how the back seat space is, all those types of things, my wife and I actually just did a full in-depth interior review last summer on a regular 2022 Civic. So I will link that above. You can go watch that if you wanna hear all the details on this interior. All right, so setting off here in the 2022 Civic Si. So the first things that really jumped out at me in the first few hundred feet of driving this vehicle are that you have pretty heavy steering. Now it is in normal mode, there's a sport mode which will make it even heavier, but even in normal mode, it's just really weighty steering. The shifter is also pretty weighty. So this is the six speed manual is the only transmission you can get here in the Civic Si still. Um, and the throws have been uh, changed. So it's about 10% shorter for the throws and they completely redid the whole shifter and everything. So it um, has a bunch of different changes, which I'll get to uh, more of the changes here in a minute but just from a feeling standpoint you'll just notice that it does feel a good bit different than the previous generation which had a really light shifter and uh, this just the whole thing just feels a little sportier just right off the bat other things you still have a fantastic visibility here the, all of these brand new civics are super good with nice thin a pillars um, you have a nice low dash and uh, just the hood drops down really nicely so excellent forward visibility you really feel like you're sitting on the edge of the hood almost with just how good you see forward the view out of the back is also really great another thing that i'm really appreciating too is that you have a really nice throttle the brake has a decent amount of travel to it but it doesn't feel really too dead or anything it just feels all very nice but um one thing too this shifter has nicely defined gates where it's very easy to find all of the gears um you know even just the first few times i drove this vehicle i didn't have to worry about mist shifting or anything very easy and you know well defined another thing i really like you have a nice light clutch so if you're someone who has to deal with a manual in traffic um this you know clutch isn't going to be a leg workout or anything it really is nice and light but yet you still have a pretty easy engagement point so it's very easy to be smooth and you know kind of learn the this clutch and where it catches uh, pretty quickly and another thing that I'm happy to report is that there is a huge improvement in the rev hang the previous generation that was probably one of the worst things about it honestly was the rev hang which could have been fixed in the aftermarket um, but it just wasn't great from the factory and this there's maybe if I look for it there is a tiny tiny little bit sometimes in certain you know shift points but honestly it's like mostly gone I mean it's the first few times I drove it, I was like, wow, there's actually like no rev hang anymore. The more that I've driven it, I've already driven this vehicle about 40 miles or so. I'm starting to see there's a tiny bit, but it is so much improved. Honestly, um, if you want a cliff notes, I would recommend getting the new Civic over the old one if the rev hang annoyed you, because that alone, just from an everyday drivability standpoint, I think it's well worth uh, the upgrade. But anyway, um, I'm gonna put it up into the sport mode here, and uh, let's turn down onto this back road and see how it does. And here we go. Wow. <laughs> Got some wheel spin. All right, it sounds nice. I like that sound. So they do have some assistance for the speakers, but this engine has been revised a little bit, but I like that. That It kind of reminds me a little bit of the naturally aspirated Civic Si's of old. It's not you know, nearly as sweet, but you know, it sounds certainly a lot better than the previous generation Civic Si, in my opinion. Anyway, good amount of power here. So um, that's kind of one of the big things with this new Civic Si that a lot of people have been talking about is um, the amount of power here. So it still runs a 1.5 liter turbocharged uh, four-cylinder engine with VTEC. Uh, it has been revised over the previous generation though now. And so um, it actually makes five less horsepower. 200 horsepower is what they're claiming, 192 pound-feet of torque. Now, um, as far as seat of the pants feeling, it's going to feel a little quicker because the uh, peak torque comes on 300 RPM sooner now. So it comes on at 1800 RPM for peak torque. And then a uh, peak power actually doesn't come on until 300 RPM later at 6000 RPM. So you need to rev it out a little bit more, give you a little bit of that Honda character of the higher revving thing, even though it still only has a 6500 RPM red line. But I just like that you still gotta go up a little bit higher for the peak power, but you still have that really meaty mid range as well. And I've just noticed that this does feel a good bit punchier. And yeah, it's honestly, 
I was fully prepared to hop into this vehicle and do an acceleration and have it feel slow. Um, they honestly, even like car and driver, they did a zero to 60 test and this is 0.2 seconds slower than the previous generation in their testing. Now that is a straight up zero to 60, like clutch dump launch. Um, realistically, the five to 60 and whenever even Honda says you're in the, uh, you know, like 30 mile per hour range and above is where you're really gonna feel a lot of extra punch here. And it does feel punchier to me. Um, I will get back to the power here in a minute, but we're coming up some corners here and let's see how the Civic Si handles here. So um, we have a 1.4 inch longer wheelbase, a half inch wider track, and those things alone are going to help this to feel better. Um, and it just, yeah, it feels really good. We have 235 wide tires. This one's running the Goodyear Eagle all season sport tires. Um, it is not running the Eagle F1. You can get that as a $200 option um, with the HPD package, which gives you summer tires. This one does not have that because I'm testing this vehicle here on December 31st. So it's a little bit colder, so this one has the all seasons, but man, it really grips so, so well. I'm very impressed. So they did a bunch of things. In addition to, you know, lengthening out that wheelbase and stuff, which is going to give you that more stable, flat feeling, they also managed to keep the weight down really nicely. It's only 2,937 pounds here, which is only 21 extra pounds over the previous generation, even with the extra tech that you have here in this. Um, you also have auto rev matching here now. Um, which I am so happy they brought this over from the Type R, and it really is a, a nice little feature to have. In addition to the fact that if you don't want the auto rev matching, you do also have now a lighter single mass flywheel instead of the old dual mass flywheel you had in the past. And so that means this engine is much more eager to rev, it's a lot quicker to rev up, and so that also helps with that rev hang and you know allowing you to rev match your downshifts easier. And so huge improvements. I wish that almost every single manual out there had a lighter flywheel. That is usually one of the things I always miss and the one thing I loved about a lot of older vehicles from you know the early 2000s and the 90s and stuff is how light their flywheels often felt and so I love that they made that change here in this. You also have nice short gearing. Um, you know with the previous generation right there at the end of the uh, mid-cycle refresh they added a uh, shorter final drive and I think that must have carried over here for the new version. I didn't see any details on that shorter final drive but I mean you just notice that you have um, a lot of punch in basically every single gear and getting back to that power thing you know they're claiming 200 horsepower but thankfully my buddies at the Savage Geese YouTube channel they put one of these on the dyno and it was putting down um, when you convert it to crank horsepower which is what they measure here you know for that 200 rating um, realistically on the dyno it's doing almost 230 horsepower so I think that Honda I don't know why they shot themselves in the foot with having a crappier rating as far as the numbers go I don't know you know how that played out or why that happened behind the scenes but it seems like they're doing this car a disservice because realistically it seems like they could honestly claim close to 230 horsepower out of this motor now that's just their testing that could vary depending on dynos and stuff so you know don't uh, you know assume this car is gonna feel like it has 230 horsepower but it definitely does feel punchier than 200 that is for certain this thing has excellent excellent punch if you can hear that either but there's a little bit of a wastegate flutter sound you hear when it like kind of blows off and so it's just a little hint that this is turbocharged now if you have any kind of you know conversation going or any kind of music playing you're not going to hear that but if you know you're just driving around in silence hitting that little turbo is also a nice little touch and I'm gonna do another rolling acceleration here with the trash control off see what we get here we go Good. It feels real good. I'm, yeah, I have no complaints of the power. I don't know why it's only a 6.8 seconds here to 60. It feels like a six second car to me easily. Um, so I don't understand the number situation, but you got to test drive one of these things before you write it off. I'm just going to say that you got to test drive one. I really think this this vehicle is, uh, you know, way, way more than the numbers. Um, so other things here. One thing that I have noticed um, that I'm not super in love with is they did get rid of the adaptive dampers. The previous generation, they didn't make a huge difference in my opinion, so I was expecting it to be like, eh, I don't really care they got rid of the adaptive dampers. But 
driving this car around, to me, I mean, it's been about a year and a half, admittedly, since I drove the previous generation Civic Si, but I just have to say that this ride feels a tiny bit firmer, I think, than the previous generation, and maybe those adaptive dampers really did help the ride quality a little bit, because this vehicle, it just, it feels like it's a little bit stiffer. Now, they did stiffen everything up as well, so um, in addition to like the springs and stuff being stiffer, you do also have just a stiffer body in general, so rigidity is way up. You do also have bushings and B-arms from the Type R, so you do have a bunch of these firmer components, and so that's great, and it's, it's not too bad, but if you live in a place with a lot of bumpy roads, you might feel that it's you know a little bit on the bumpy side. Now we are talking about sport compacts, you know, none of them have luxury car rides, but you know, I just I don't know, it just seemed like when I whenever first few bumps here in this car, I was like, hmm, like I don't know, maybe the previous generation was a little bit smoother. I don't know. And yeah, you can really feel the limited slip diff that this has, you know, has the helical limited slip diff, and um, the way that it puts power down very well is great, but you still do have some drama, but it just feels so good to have that LSD just claw its way out of corners you can really feel that when you're powering out of a corner and thanks to that torque coming on sooner it kind of has a little bit more work to do here this time around because you know it has a little more power to kind of manage there up front so that it doesn't you know go into a torque steering kind of situation um, but it does a really good job uh, you know putting the power down of course and that's kind of one of the defining things of the Civic Si that it offers that a lot of its competitors don't uh, or at least some of the cheaper stuff like the Kia Forte GT and the Elantra N-Line but this motor is really so much sweeter with the way that it, it does love to rev a lot more. And also you do have bigger brakes over a regular Civic, um, so that does help this vehicle to you know, slow itself down uh, nicely, but it's so, so flat. And I, yeah, it like really loves to pull you through the corners there with that front wheel drive setup. And it actually, it's it does feel very good. This does certainly feel much better in corners than the, like, the Elantra N-Line that I just uh, reviewed a few months back. You, I mean, the Civic Si is more expensive, and I'll get more into pricing in a minute, but I, I'm i starting to think that it is certainly worth those few thousand dollars extra, because again, the motor feels punchier, the, you have the manual transmission, which feels much better than the Elantra N-Line, and the handling feels much better, and I also have to add, all three of those things also feel better than they do in the uh, Jetta GLI as well, which is actually a little bit more expensive. Um, it's a little more luxurious as well these days, but um, yeah, I'm just very, very impressed with the way this thing drives. I'm also pretty impressed with um, the refinement here. So even though the ride isn't buttery smooth, um, you know, it still doesn't really beat me up too much. And I've been going over a few more potholes here and it feels very good. But also, you know, even on this rougher road, there's not really much road noise. And I think the Civic, just in general for this generation, is just so much more of a solid, higher quality feeling vehicle. Corollas and some of the vehicles in this segment just don't have the same amount of polish to them that the Civic does. And yeah, it just really helps the SI because it means that this does feel like the refinement is kind of a class above most of its competitors. One last thing to mention here about the SI is that in sport mode here, you do have the heavier steering and you also have quicker throttle response and the engine's a little more eager, they say. Uh, but the cool thing here with the 2022s is you now have an individual mode. So there's not really much customization, especially now that there's no adaptive dampers. But basically, it allows you to mix and match the steering feel with the throttle response. So if you want um, the more relaxed steering with the sharper throttle or vice versa, that is what the individual mode is there for. Uh, but those are the only two things that changes. So nice that it has it, you know, but not a huge deal. And honestly, with how heavy this vehicle feels uh, with the steering in normal mode, I don't even really feel like sport mode's necessary. Necessary. And I haven't felt any kind of wild difference as far as throttle response um, so far. It you know feels really good in either mode. So um, yeah, I don't know. I just think that they just set it up really well in normal mode, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to constantly be putting it into sport mode in order for, for it to feel you know decent. We'll uh, merge on to an on ramp here, and we can see how uh, the car pulls here at some higher highway speeds. And this is where, you know, once you get up to some higher speeds, it does feel like it kind of runs out of steam a tiny bit and where, you know, it might feel a little bit closer to 200 horsepower. But man, around town, this thing certainly feels more muscular than 200 horsepower. But while we are out here on the highway, doing some highway speeds here, I gotta say that it's kind of surprising uh, just how high the RPMs kind of hang out here. I think part of that is thanks to the final drive, you know, being shorter here and it's just 
nice and short gearing, which I like. Um, and amazingly, this vehicle still gets uh, almost 40 mpg on the highway. But uh, the sixth gear here, just cruising at like even like 62 miles per hour, I'm sitting at 2,500 RPMs, which is great because with peak torque coming out at 1,800 RPMs, it means that you know if you don't want to be uh, stirring the pot here and shifting gears in order to you know make a pass on the highway, you can just kind of lean into sixth gear here, and you still get some nice passing power. And uh, you know, once you're up to like 70 and beyond, you're at like three grand and just sitting there. And so, uh, just be aware that you know, if you are going to put an aftermarket exhaust on one of these things, it's going to be screaming because you'll be just coasting at three grand every time you're out on the highway at any kind of elevated highway speeds. But it does mean that you have you know nice passing power. And thankfully, with a stock exhaust here, even when you are sitting at 3,000 RPMs, it doesn't really feel like it's roaring in here or anything. So that's definitely nice. But I just put on the adaptive cruise control system, which it's notable that this manual transmission car even has adaptive cruise control. With a lot of manuals, they're like, oh, well, there's a manual here, so we can't do adaptive cruise. Honda doesn't use that excuse. They give you the adaptive cruise control, and it's standard here, by the way, and uh, it works really great. I love the Honda Sensing Safety Suite. It's so good. It's honestly, in my opinion, one of the best adaptive cruise control systems out there as far as doing the lane keeping for you. Um, it's a system that always gives me confidence. It never has crossed over the lanes or made me have to feel like I had to babysit it or anything. It's just a very good adaptive cruise control system. Other safety enhancements here for the new generation of the Civic Si is that you have now blind spot monitoring as standard and rear cross traffic alert as standard. Those two things were not on the previous generation um, for the Si. So you get that now again as standard. It also does have you know the uh, automatic emergency braking and things like that as well. Um, but great that they've added those additions. They've also with this new generation Civic made numerous enhancements to the structure for the crash structure itself. So it's going to you know, perform better in uh, crash tests as well. And they even redesigned the airbags, which is something that most car companies never even mention the airbags, aside from how many it has. But this the Honda does a really good job of saying they've come up with new airbag designs to limit your head movement in crashes. And so the Civic has all these other enhancements, you know, in addition to just all the safety tech, which is what everyone else wants to publicize. Oh, look at all these, you know, gizmos it has. But this is like, hey, when you do actually hit something, this is going to do really, really well still and that's you know especially important whenever you're talking about a car that's under 3,000 pounds going up against you know all these behemoths that we have out on the road these days so having that extra safety uh, crash protection I think is another very valuable thing here and a really nice extra perk here of the Civic Si but um, yeah that's about all of my first initial impressions here I just I'm really enjoying it. I love having the rev matching. I love having this punchier engine that sounds sweeter. I love all the tech that this has. I just, I really love everything about the Civic Si. It is really such a nice driving little car. But thanks to Honda, I'm going to have the Civic Si here for an entire week. So I'm going to drive around all over the place here and then I'll come back and give you guys my final real world fuel economy as well as my thoughts on the pricing, its competition, and anything else I noticed during my week of driving. Alright, so I've been driving the Civic Si here for a week now and man, I have a whole new respect and appreciation for the 2022 Civic Si. This thing, it really just blew all my expectations right out of the water. Everything that I said at the beginning of this review, totally agree with. So this thing is just so, so good to drive. I love driving this car. This is one of the press cars where I, I was like trying to find more excuses to drive because I really enjoyed every little errand that I ran in this thing because it was just so, so fun and so enjoyable to drive. Yeah, the only thing that I've uh, continued to uh, monitor here during my week with the Civic Si is the ride pony. And I still feel like it's a little stiffer than I would like. And I still feel like it might be a tiny bit stiffer than the previous generation. It's not bad um, for this type of vehicle and stuff. It certainly would not be a deal breaker at all. And uh, honestly, I have to say, and I don't say this lightly, this is my favorite car under $30,000, especially if you need four doors. If you don't need four doors, I still think I like the GR86 and the BRZ a little bit better at the under $30,000 price point. But I really love this car that much. And if I needed a four-door car and I had to stick to under $30,000, 
this is what I would buy. One other quick little thing I do want to mention though is that the rev hang is something I continue to also monitor and see, you know, how it feels over an actual week of driving. And what I've noticed is it definitely is worse when the engine is cold for some reason. Once the engine's warmed up, it's basically almost like no rev hang. But whenever it's cold, if you're, you know, setting out from the very beginning of a test drive on a cold engine, you might be like, oh, this still has rev hang. What is he talking about? Once it's fully warmed up, I feel like the rev hang is almost eliminated here and is really, really good. The last thing I do have to say I'm very impressed by is the fuel economy here in the Civic Si. Now, these are rated at 27 MPG in the city, 37 on the highway, and 31 combined. My driving was almost exclusively back roads, 35 mile per hour kind of cruising around. Did a little bit of stop and go, did a little bit of highway driving, um, but my fuel economy has been 29.9 MPG. So I am doing almost the combined rating, and typically, if you watch any of my other reviews, I usually get one to two MPG less than the city rating. So I was expecting to get 25 here, and I actually did a lot more idling in this car than I usually do, just sitting in drive-through lines and stuff. And uh, I still am at 30 miles to the gallon. I'm actually really shocked. I don't know why it's that good, but this leads me to believe that uh, this car will actually overperform its EPA estimates um, out in the real world here. Another, you know on top of the Civic Si driving experience here. But the last thing to mention here is the pricing of the Civic Si. And so, you know, as much as I love all these improvements, I do think that it might not be quite as good of a value proposition as it used to be. So they did raise the price by over $2,000 here for this new generation Civic Si. And yes, there's a lot of great improvements, um, you know, not only just because the engine feels punchier and you have more room and it's a nicer interior, you have a nicer screen, you have a Bose stereo, some really nice improvements. But don't forget, you also did lose heated seats and you lost the adaptive dampers. And I was kind of hoping um, that those things would wash each other out and you'd end up with a vehicle that still is, you know, $26,500 or so. That's not the case here. This one, uh, so they started about $28,300 and then this one as tested with the orange paint is uh, $28,710. If you were to add on the uh, HPD package for the summer tires, it's an extra $200. So even a maxed out most expensive Civic Si is just under $29,000. So since we have to go by the ratings these vehicles are given, I gotta say that again, if you're looking for a 200 horsepower sport compact sedan, you're still gonna be better off getting either a Forte GT or an Elantra N-Line um, because those with their manuals are about $4,000 cheaper than this. Now, their infotainment I don't think is quite as good as this car. Um, I don't think the stereo is as good as this car. They have rev hang, which this, like I said, doesn't really have, um, you know, and I think, again, this feels punchier. It is more than 200 horsepower. I don't know why Honda won't give it credit for that, but it is more than 200 horsepower. This feels a little bit punchier than the Elantra N-Line and the Forte GT. And so you also have the auto rev match downshift. The shifter's better. This is better in all of those ways that, yes, $4,000 is a big chunk of change in this price range, and so if $4,000 is going to really, you know, upset your budget, then, you know, go get a Forte GT or an Elantra N-Line. Still fantastic cars, a lot of fun, you know, no regrets, I think, going for one of those. But if you can afford the little premium here for the Civic Si, I think you get a more premium feeling car, you get all these nicer improvements, and everything just feels better to the point that I think that yes, this is worth the price premium over the Elantra N-Line Forte GT. And when I started off in this vehicle last week, I was not expecting to say that. I was assuming, you know, this wasn't gonna be as good of a value, you know, it wasn't gonna feel as fast as I was hoping it would, and you know, it'd be an easy write-off. But that is not the case. This thing is so much better. Again, you have to go test drive one um, if you're seriously considering stuff like this and you're trying to weigh for yourself whether that price premium is worth it for this. Now, um, there are still a couple other unknowns. So even though, you know, I would take this over the Elantra N line and the Forte GT, you know, another thing that is easy to write off, unfortunately, is the Jetta GLI. That is another one. Those are about $4,000 more expensive. Now, Volkswagen does uh, say that it has 228 horsepower, so they claim that higher horsepower figure. I'll be actually reviewing a refreshed uh, GLI here this next couple of weeks, and so I'll really be seeing you know, how that compares to this power-wise, but from what I remember with the last drive in the GLI that I had, this really feels 
pretty similar power wise. So that four thousand dollars basically is going to come down to whether you want the GLI with its, um, you know, all the extra features you get for that four thousand. The Jetta GLI gives you heated and cooled seats. You get fully digital gauges. You get leather seats. Um, you know, and it feels a little more luxurious. Is that worth four thousand dollars? That will come down to what you're looking for. Now the only other two wild cards here um, that kind of mess with the value proposition of the Civic Si are the 2022 WRX and the 2022 Elantra N. So we don't know the pricing for the WRX uh, for the new generation version just yet as of me filming this in the uh, early January 2022 here. But it's likely going to be, you know, right around 30,000 or slightly under 30,000 for the WRX. Now that base model will not have a premium stereo and, you know, won't have some other features. But, you know, it's just worth noting that you can potentially get all-wheel drive and 270 you know, odd horsepower for, uh, you know, probably around the same price point. And especially if you're someone who lives in a snow belt that appreciates all-wheel drive, you know, that could potentially um, upset the value here of the Civic Si. The only thing I can say though, is if you are willing to go up another 4,000 beyond the Civic Si price point, you can get yourself an Elantra N. The Elantra N is a clear winner as far as fun, features, horsepower, all that stuff. For $33,000, that car gives you, you know, over 270 horsepower, hilarious amounts of fun. Um, you also have all the crackles and pops from the exhaust, all of the toys it has with its launch control, and uh, you can change the uh, sound uh, profile and all these different things you can do with the Elantra N. I absolutely love the Elantra N. It actually had me cracking up, laughing out loud, because it's it was so much fun to drive that car. Now, um, you know, it has the adaptive suspension as well, which you don't get here in this. And, uh, you know, it has a lot of nice features for only $4,000 more and a lot more power for $4,000 more. So I still think if you aren't, you know, really sticking hard and fast that $30,000 rule, if you're willing to flex a little bit up to 33, I still think Elantra N all day long is the better value. Now, I know the Elantra N has, and Elantras in general, have very bold styling that's not for everyone. And the Elantra N even turns it up to 11 with the styling of the spoiler and the way they did the front end and stuff. So this is really a nice, happy medium. And whenever you view it with the glasses of, you know, this potentially being a 230 horsepower vehicle with more subdued looks for, you know, under $29,000 with much nicer interior and stuff, I still think there's a place for the Civic Si value-wise. I still think it is a good value. Maybe not as good as before, but still a very solid value in the performance compact segment here. For my money, I'd probably spend the four grand extra for the Elantra N. But if I really did want to stick to that under, you know, and save that $4,000, getting one of these is not going to be something you're going to regret. It's still going to be so fantastically fun. And you're most likely going to get slightly better fuel economy with the smaller engine and stuff too. Now I'm at 30.3 MPG, by the way, even with the driving I've been doing here. <laughs> Yeah, this thing really likes to rip. It is, it's a, it's a fun car. I absolutely love this thing. It also really helps, so I have to add one last thing. It probably feels a little stronger to me because it's 36 degrees outside. This is boost weather. It's prime weather for these turbos. It's gonna feel a lot punchier than, you know, whenever people are out on the press launch driving these things around in California and stuff like that, where it's a lot warmer. So I think that's also helping me to have a more favorable view of this engine, but I really think it did a fantastic job with, uh, you know, re retuning this engine and making it feel a lot punchier. But anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the Civic Si. I absolutely love it, highly recommend it. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Civic Si in the comments below. Huge thanks to Honda for providing me here with the new Civic Si to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.